welcome to Time to Keto with Donna. So it's part two of my test results of my lifeline screening. They came yesterday, so I am going to uh, sit down and go over them with you. Well, today I get to get rid of the gray. It's a hair day, a me day. So you remember that song? Remember that uh, advertisement? If you're old enough. You say, I'm going to get that gray right out of my head. Well, today's the day for that. So what do you think? If Marilyn was a redhead, you think we're pretty closely related? <laughs> well, that's what I feel like when I visit my friend Becky over at Trendsetters when I get my hair done. That always feels so good, better than any food out there. <laughs> so. It's here. It came. I waited with bated breath. My lifeline screening results are here in this envelope. It's like the Academy Wars. Very colorful. See? Got pictures and everything. All right, so let's go over it. Let's see. So the carotid artery disease one, which is the one I was most concerned about, is in the green. Normal. Look at the lowest that there is. Normal. And then it tells you what does it mean? Normal, our physician has reviewed the ultrasound images and blood flow measurements and found no evidence of plaque buildup or restriction of blood flow in the carotid arteries. So that's the biggie. But they do say, please be aware that blockages can develop in the coronary arteries. So, you know, that would be the CAC score, but considering I can't get that, I'm pretty happy with this. It even has a picture of what my artery looks like right there nice and clear so that's the progression and that's the one that's very clear okay they did an atrial fib fibrillation test and that was normal 57 beats per minute normal that was with a six lead ekg those. Then the next is the abdominal aortic aneurysm screening. And I was green, normal. What does it mean? Our physician has reviewed the ultrasound, remember it's another ultrasound, images and measurements of the aorta and iliac arteries and no aneurysm was detected. I was that concerned about that, but that's good. And then here's another little picture. It's a nice picture of the abdominal aorta. Uh, this one is a good one, peripheral, peripheral arterial disease. I've got, uh, oh, they check both sides. So more green, normal, very low. Uh, your peripheral, peripheral arterial disease screening result is normal. The ABI is between 0.90 and 1.4. This means the pressures in your ankles are almost as high or higher than the pressures in your arms, which is a normal result. And they have a picture that says, you are here, and then that would be the problem. And I am here. This is exciting. Osteoporosis, I did not do anything with that. Body mass index was 22. Okay, my blood pressure at that day, because I, I had forgotten to write that down, was 97 over 66. I said, I told you, I've always had wonderful blood pressure. So if my heart's not pumping so hard, I think there's probably not much blockage in there, in my opinion. Uh, then there's a screening that was a heart risk assessment screening. I'm not 100% sure on this. It has moderate risk, not in the green, in the yellow, moderate risk, a measurement of one, one, and that's moderate. So I'm not really sure how that works. It says, what does it mean to me? Your heart risk assessment score reported as 10 year coronary heart disease risk is 1%. That means about one of 100 people with this level of risk will have a heart attack or die of heart disease within the next 10 years. So one in a hundred. I kind of thought it'd be like one in a thousand. Doesn't one sound really good? So hmm, that one says moderate. 
Uh, waste is 35, and that's in the normal range. They did that lipid, uh, it says complete lipid panel. Um, it was a finger stick, but uh, it had all the lipid stuff in there. So the total cholesterol was 210. I went over that before, but they were just saying that that is borderline high. You know, 210, ooh, I ain't worried about that. And then I had uh, the HDL was 68, and it says that means it's protective against heart disease. The LDL was 121, which was near optimal, still in the green. And the triglycerides were 104, which is also in the green. So all of these, well, except for 210 for cholesterol, are in the green. So I'm not sure if my LDL did go down because it was, uh, I think, 224 that my doctor was worried about. And he told me that anything over 190 is when they want to prescribe a statin. Still not going to take one. But this makes me feel much, much better. Especially um, the HDL says protective against heart disease. So that's really good. Glucose is normal. The thing I was a little surprised about was the high sensitive C-reactive protein. And that's the one that shows inflammation. I guess it's not a bad thing, but it shows average risk. So it's not in the green for low risk, just as average risk, which I guess is not terrible. And it says, uh, blah, 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 is 1.80, uh, which is in the normal range, 110 to 3.0. So that is normal. I just like green better than yellow. This may indicate an average risk for developing cardiovascular disease. And these results are based on, um, defined by the American Heart Association and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So that's where they get their numbers from. And they give you things like to avoid, you know, for a healthy lifestyle and physical activity and uh, nutrition, alcohol, smoking. But of course, their nutrition is the standard nutrition. And on nutrition, um, on one of the forms you fill out, I had answered um, that I eat high fat or fried foods two times in a typical day. Because there was no other way to answer that. I don't eat fried foods two times a day. I eat high fat foods two times a day. So you really couldn't separate that. Uh, the National Dietary, Dietary Guidelines want you to be 20 to 35% of your daily calories from fat. They do acknowledge that fat provides energy and is a carrier of important nutrients like vitamin A, D, E, and K, and carotenoids. If I'm saying that right. However, saturated fat and trans fat should be avoided because they may increase the risk of heart disease and other health conditions. Well, I don't do the trans fats or, you know, like hardly any there. But then most fats in your diet should come from foods containing polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fatty acids, such as fish, okay, nuts, okay, and vegetable oils. Let's see that, vegetable oils. Really? So that, you know, I'm not too happy about that. Uh, and then when selecting meat, poultry, and milk products, you should choose those that are lean, low fat, and fat or fat free. So that part I don't agree with. <laughs> but anyway, overall, and they even made a nice little copy that you can bring to your doctor, which I will bring up probably have about uh, two months. I'll be going for my annual, usually around my birthday or so. Okay, then they have uh, a paper here for it says six for life health assessment. It's a disease risk assessment, um, and it's based on, um, and if you've ever heard of the Framingham, Framingham Heart Study, I have heard of it. I don't know the details off the top of my head, so look that up, but it's a very, very big uh, heart study. I think they follow people for like 30, 40, 50 years. Massachusetts, something up north. Um, they're derived from such measurements as cholesterol and glucose, blood pressure, body mass index, and waste management as well as reported personal medical and family history and lifestyle risk factors, such as smoking, I don't smoke, status and exercise levels. I could do a little better there. So this tells me, let's see, number one is uh, my coronary heart disease score is 15, which indicates your risk for this condition is low. Low congestive heart failure. My score of 10 indica indicates your risk for this condition 
is also low. <laughs> Boy, this feels kind of good. That's one, two, three. This surprised me. Stroke, which, you know, of course, that's an important thing, too. I have a stroke score of 25, which indicates your risk for this condition is moderate. So I'm being honest here, moderate. And the reason is mostly because of my age. Because your age is 55 plus, your risk for stroke or TIA is slightly increased. So not much you can do about that. You also do not have a personal history of conditions that increase your risk for stroke, such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, or atrial fibrillation. So it's still a good score. I mean, it's moderate, but it's, it, it's good. There's nothing I can do about my, about my age. Diabetes sort of surprised me. Score of 23, which is moderate. Also, not low. I would have thought low. I mean, I've always had, you know, good blood sugars. And, you know, with eating low carb, you know, my insulin level isn't going crazy. It's a score of 23. And it indica indicates your condition is moderate. But they're modifiable risk factors related to being physically active. So not really um, eating a healthy diet. Depends on what you consider a healthy diet. Uh, maintaining a healthy weight, check. And not smoking, check. So I'm not really sure why I'm getting moderate and not low. Okay. And number five, COPD. If you don't know, that means chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. I have a score of five, which says this condition is low. And last but not least is lung cancer. I don't really know how, how they figure that, but it's 10, which is also low. Um, I'm adopted, so I don't know a lot of my family history, but I do know uh, I have met my birth mother and she did die of lung cancer. Of course, in Canada, they smoke like fiends. <laughs> so not really a surprise there. So I'm not really that concerned. Um, because of your family history, it is important for you to manage your risk factors you can control and, of course, smoking. So, so that's pretty much it. So there you have it. I'm not sure if you were interested. <laughs> But, you know, I'm an average person, I'm an older lady, and I'm eating this way about a year and a half, and I wanted to see, like I said, I wanted to see how it was affecting my body. You know, it, was it harming me? And I do not feel it is. I feel I'm doing very well. I'm going to continue this way. I feel a lot more relief from that. I'm not going to push it by the CAC. Maybe I'll wait till I'm 60, so maybe I'll wait two years. So I... It's kind of exciting to do. If uh, you're ever interested in it, look around. Just go on Lifeline, either Lifeline.com or LifelineScreening.com. Uh, maybe I'll put a link in below. They're all around the country. Like I said they just rent like a, a space, you know, just for a day and all. It is, you know, cash, you know, credit card, <laughs> uh, but you know, it is not through insurance. But it was a, a lot of peace of mind for me. I, I was very happy about that. Uh, the only thing I really think I would need, honestly need to change is to do a little more physical activity. So we'll see if I can fit that in. So give me your thoughts about this type of testing. Have you heard of it before? Are you interested in it? Um, do you think it was stupid that I did it? Should I believe it? The one thing I was a little concerned about with the blood work was that it was a finger stick. Um, I did you know, look up later on, is it as accurate as you know regular venous blood? Um, and, and most said yes. Some said eh, a little bit different. I'll be getting my regular blood work um, in, you know, at my annual. So we'll compare that because my LDL, like I said, was a little bit higher, which he was concerned about. And it was lower on this uh, test. Definitely lower than his 190 cap. And I feel very satisfied with these results that I'm on the right path. I don't need a statin. I still will not take a statin. I don't know if I can change his mind. It's just might be what they're told to do. So what, what can you do? But they're not going to force it down my throat. So he can say it all he wants and I can say no all I want. So based on all these results, if you're still with me, what would you do? Leave in the comments. What do you think? Do you think those were good results for someone who's just about 58? Do you think you would be concerned about heart disease? Do you think you would be concerned with diabetes with the results that I shared with you. And then more importantly, what are your thoughts on statins? Would you take a statin with these results? 
Like I said, personally, he wants to put me on a statin because of one test, LDL. And I feel I did not have any other risk factors and I feel much better now. But anyway, um, I know this was a little bit different and probably a little bit long, which is why I did it up into two videos. But yeah, leave a comment uh, if you liked this, if this was, you know, it was a little bit different. But I thought it was interesting for those of us on keto and low carb. How, how does a regular person do with their labs? I just, I thought it was an interesting video to do and I'm glad I got it done. Well, until next time.